Hello, I'm Julia Ortega, and welcome to Useless News You Need to Know. Today, we're talking about the rise and fall of 3D entertainment. It's been around for over a century, and it always seems to disappear before it makes its comeback through new advancements. 3D is a way of showing images and tricking your brain into thinking it has depth. In the real world, your eyes focus on objects at different distances. But when you read or watch something in 2D, your eyes don't refocus as heavily. We talked to two different filmmakers on this issue. One who loves 3D when done correctly, and one who has very little adoration towards the technology thus far. No, because uh, at this stage, with the added cost, you can look at statistics and people are staying away from 3D films. They'd rather go see the flat version, spend a couple bucks less and maybe buy more popcorn. It's, a, it's an effect. I think for a drama film, it's a complete waste of time, but I think for a, an effects-driven film, it can be pretty, pretty fun. I mean, I, I love 3D effects. When they work, they're great. I'd consider it, but I'd like to know what the fatigue factor is, because there's a, a processing fatigue that, that humans have in trying to process so many images per second. So I just like to see what, 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 you know, how it really plays out in the real world. It all sounds interesting. I'd like to see what's really, you know, how it really works. When it works, it works well. When it gives added value to a project, it's great to do it in 3D. I think when it adds minimal value to a, pro to a project, I don't think it makes a whole lot of sense. people that have gone to see the films and I've asked them hey what was it like 3D you know and they said you know actually it didn't really have to be 3D I think the application that I would use it for would be like for a uh, a horror movie something with uh, monsters uh, car racing action something that you could apply that and actually make the uh, the audience either jump or feel like something's coming at them, or feel like uh, you're, you're in a, uh, the race car is going around a corner or something. Some application you could find and uh, where it would really put you in the moment, which is what I think what it's intended to do. I would probably wait. I, there's got to be, a, history has shown us that uh, once something like that, like that is introduced, and it's a bit cumbersome or costly or you have to wear glasses, right around the corner somebody's, and if it's popular and it catches on, then right around the corner something's, you know, they'll change it, they'll, they'll improve it. First appearing in the late 1800s, early patents showcased two images projected on a screen. This approach still applies. As we've gone from multicolored glasses in the early 1900s to polarized techniques which blend two videos at different frequencies. Some of the current issues with 3D include a darker image, shrinking of light, which means that images look smaller because the light gathers in the lenses. We talked to an expert about how your perception is affected by 3D. Okay, so basically 3D, what it does is it tricks your brain into perceiving something that it's not actually perceiving. And what I mean by that uh, is kind of illustrated here. Um, it all comes down to the field of vision that's being projected onto your fovea in the back of your eye. As you can see here, this is the eye, the fovea is here, pupils up here. So obviously light comes in and it's projected there. Now this fovea, you can think of it like a donut lying on its side here. This is a bird's eye view of it. And you can see the outer part is made of these things called rods. Uh, and these rods are responsible for things like movement, picking up movement in your field of vision, uh, and seeing at night. Where the cones in the middle 
are responsible for higher detail and things that are in focus directly in front of you, like what's being projected in 3D glasses right in front of you. So basically, uh, what I believe is that 3D, when it projects the light into the eye, it hits the fovea in a more of a central location. And what you can see here is the rods and the cones uh, depicted in kind of a cross section. So the cones are in the middle, rods are on the outside. I believe light from the 3D comes in here and is focused on the fovea uh, in an area where the cones are concentrated. Now those cones are not responsible for things like sensitive, sensitivity to movement. So when you get those big dramatic pans in 3D movies where the sides of the screen seem to flicker, uh, that's why. It's basically because the cones are doing the job of what the rod should be doing. And it's that kind of uh, difference in perception that makes it more evident to you while you're watching it in 3D versus in 2D when pans aren't as flickery. Moving forward, we are looking at a world where 3D will make its return, be it with glasses-free 3D technology like the Nintendo 3DS and certain cell phones. Or maybe, someday, holographic screens will become a reality. That's actually a 3D image that's coming out of the screen. Whatever the case may be, if it messes with your head, I'll be there to report about it. My name is Julia Ortega, and thanks for watching Useless News You Need to Know.